Hello everyone, now I'm just setting up a pin bot, this is the System 11 version, and it was delivered with the head disconnected, which is unusual because uh, it's actually got hinges, so you can just fold it up like that. I don't know, maybe it needs to get out of a small doorway or something. Anyway, so the second unusual thing is, uh, this is the loom. I can't see it brilliantly in this light. But basically, it's all been disconnected from the boards in the head, which is unnecessary because on these early System 11s, it's actually got the loom separator connectors, just like you get on the old System 7s. So basically, you need to just pull that off, and then there's a second one. Yeah, you won't be able to see it because they're darkness, but just here. Nope, that's it. But just there, there's a white connector. And you basically pull them apart, you can take apart the whole loom. So, don't know why they've disconnected it all from the boards. Anyway, um, I'll get this reassembled. Okay, and the head is now attached and folded up. I've got this big pile of wiring to basically reroute and connect up. I've got some crazy stuff going on. Like for some reason, half these connectors have got bullet terminals on them rather than the original Molexes. It's got a uh, homemade top there. Um, I forgot, we've got a remote battery holder. Okay, that's good. They've even put a little note on to say when they've changed the batteries. That's nice. But uh, there's a scary amount of. Uh, bullet connectors in here, which are not labelled. It's all a bit of a crazy mess. So, I'll drag everything out and try and get it set up the best I can. Might have a few things I'll have to trace the wiring out on. I could do with changing that filter cap, I think. That looks a bit old. Yeah, a couple of things to do on this power supply, I think. Better I'll check for some burnt GI connectors as well while I'm in here. Okay, and here's the back box partially done. Uh, I'm just kind of putting things where I think they look like they go. I've kind of untangled all this mess, got it all stretched out. Uh, what I'm going to do is, after I put everything where I think it goes, I'm going to check it all out and then I'm going to compare it to the manual. Anything that looks dodgy, I'm going to trace out manually and make sure it's going to the right place. Right, so most of the wiring is in. Um, I'm sure 9 out of 10 of the connectors are right. But again, I'm just going to check in the manual. So the things that I've got issue with. Um, these wires here, the colours do not match these wires here. So no idea which one of those goes in which. I'll have to try and work them out somehow. Um, this audio cable here is bodged up. I need to get that. I'm going to cut all this off and uh, solder and heat shrink that. Make that a bit neater. Um, We've got a few connectors here that need to go on the door. I'm taking off the door just to get easier access. The, uh, the battery contacts aren't labelled, so I need to obviously trace out which is plus and minus, so I can connect them over here. But I think it's getting there. It's a little frustrating. Oh, let's see. Loose wire, which I'm gonna. God, how do you get to the back of the speaker? I'm guessing it's off this speaker here. Can't really get to that. Yeah, that's where it's off. How's this thing come out? Oh, I've lost screws. Well, these weren't really thinking when they made this part here solid on the older System 11s. Obviously, this predates the uh, panels that you can actually lift out. Anyway, that's broke on. Okie dokie, so we're inside the cabinet now. Let's have a look what's going on in here. Now the flipper buttons have been modified, we've got a, is that a tip 102, a resistor and a fuse holder, I've got brain stopped working for a second there. Not sure entirely what they're achieving here, it's maybe an attempt at stopping the, uh, the switch contacts from arcing by switching the base of that transistor I guess. So that'll be the incoming power there. And there'll be a feed going off to the flipper coils. It's the same over here. This is on the other side. It's got the same setup. Uh, not decided whether that's genius or silly yet. I will investigate further and see if it's been executed properly. Potentially a good idea. I'll uh, check that out more later. So, looking at the back of the playfield, all the coils have been taped the brackets. 
I mean, they aren't screwed in still, but I don't know. Is this to stop them rattling? What? What? I don't know what the thinking is here behind this. This is not normal. You don't tape the coils to the brackets. But they've all been done. All except for the two flipper ones. Um, flipper mechs look fairly decent. I'd say they've been rebuilt. Nice and shiny parts. So I'd say they're, they're looking pretty good. Um, yeah, not sure what's going on with these taped coils. Also, what is with the... Ugh. What, what's supposed to be going on here? We've got resistors, we've got curly wires, some of which are broken. What's with these curly wires? I've not actually worked on a pin bot before, so I don't know if it's normal. But we've got these resistor boards, which I know from you know Data East Games and other early games, I'd assume these are going to be uh, resistors for the uh, flash lamps. But I haven't seen it like this before with the curly wires, I don't know what that's all about. Some of these are broken, I can see straight away, so we need to get these fixed. Yeah, there's what, three or four? That's a few of these boards. Lots of little relays in this one. Yep, further investigation is required. Okay, so the battery's connected up now. I've traced out everything else, made sure it matches the manual. Apart from it's connected to the top, I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, displays are connected up. All the backboard lighting is connected up. Last thing to do is I'm just going to check out the mains lead. Now the mains lead is uh, pretty horrible. That's going to be a power fail. But I'm just going to check out if it's actually safe enough to plug in and test the machine. It's looking a bit rough. It's definitely got bulges and it's a definite power fail without even testing it. You can just tell looking at it. Um, uh, ooh, looks a bit messed up as well. I'm going to just test it. I'm going to make sure at least the earth is good to all the metal work. This, this is all tight. I've got a decent fuse. Oh no, I'm not sure. It's looking really ropey, this. Um, I've got a reel of cable still in here, actually, from the last machine. I was just rewinding. Where is it? There we go. Reel of cable's under the diner. So I'll probably end up putting a new cable on this, actually. It is looking pretty scabby. Danger, Will Robinson. Uh, let's see, you can spot the uh, problems with this plug. Uh, off you go. So first of all, uh, live and neutral are swapped. Second of all, that's a non-approved fuse. That's some random piece of rubbish. Uh, so, I'm not going to be plugging this in straight away. Right, this is a properly wired plug on some new flex. Heavy duty as usual. Okay, so first things first, the cable gland is tight so that this can't move around. Neutral goes to neutral, live is the one that is fused, unlike the previous plug. Uh, press the top pin. Importantly, these wires are in tight and they can't be wiggled out. There's no exposed copper, so all the cables have been cut to the right length. Screws need to be extra tight so that they don't move around, and the fuse is a Genuine BS1362 approved fuse, so that will actually break at the correct current rather than some random current like the Chinese ones. Um, pull that back together, and we'll be threading it into the machine. Okay, so this is the filter box on the inside, which attaches there to the side of the cabinet. Basically, it's the mains coming in, it goes to the filter, goes to the main cabinet fuse, and that there is the accessory socket, so you can plug in things like a soldering iron. Not much used in the UK, because it's actually an American style socket. Then we have the mains going out from the filter, which basically goes to the main power switch, which is the front right corner of the cab. After that, it goes to the transformer when switched on. So, as you can see, new cables threaded, not clipped into the clips yet. I've, I've uh, cut it, stripped back the wires, put it to the right length. Now I just need to solder it on to the filter. And well, the neutral goes to the neutral of the filter, earth goes to the earth of the filter, which is the metal housing, and the live will go to that fuse holder there. There we go, so the new wire is now soldered onto the filter and the fuse. Uh, I've actually disconnected this uh, service socket. Uh, I don't really want that as that's live even when the cabinet switched off. 
uh, as it's an American plug anyway, it's not really any use. So just increasing the safety slightly. Uh, so this is ready now to attach back into the cabinet. And there we go, power box is now reinstalled. Cable's been threaded correctly out to the back. Uh, while I'm here, um, I actually had a closer look at these. These are definitely not original. Um, I couldn't really tell through the viewfinder before. Let's see if we can get a focus on it. Nope, doesn't want to focus. Come on. Anyway, these resistors have all been hot glued to the board. Then they're attached with these curly wires. That's definitely not standard. Uh, it's supposed to be soldered straight through. I don't know if this is supposed to be some sort of attempt at shock absorbing. It's a little bit odd. I'm not sure that hot glue will stand uh, trials of time. Right, here's another important pre-power up check we need to do. So basically what I've done is I've clipped the ground lead of my meter onto the earth pin of the plug. Got it on continuity test, red lead, really just need to touch every metal part on the machine that's exposed. This is the lockdown bar. Continuity, coin door, whole thing should have continuity, which it does. Shoes are housing, side rail, side rail, leg, other leg. And the last thing you need to do is basically check that the grounding inside the back box is also so we just need to, and that is fine there. Okay, so we're plugged in, therefore we're ready for the first power up. Let's just get to the switch. There we go, that's expected as we uh, reset the uh, batteries up. So let's just uh, advance past that. One second. Hmm. That mechanism does not sound particularly healthy. Let's take a look at that. See, we've got lots of LEDs. This looks, you know, fairly nice. We've got the uh, ring light bumpers. Oh, speech is working. That's good. Displays all look pretty good. So we've got LEDs over here. Now this is concerning me. Why are these flashes lit up? There's one there, one there, one at the back, one at the back. That one isn't. I'm guessing almost certainly they shouldn't be lit up during a track mode so it looks like they might be shorted on anyway what to do is get some balls for the game and we can check what works right so we're starting off doing some testing doing the music test first got some good music in this game for its time the uh, famous multi ball tune. Right, let's switch to the next test. Displays are all looking pretty good. No problems. Well, why is the playfield just suddenly a little blue then? Might be an intermittent connection on the uh, GI, I guess. This is the sound samples now. Right, all lamps test. Let's have a look. See if we can spot anything that's out. Initial glance looks like it's all working. So it's real, that blue light flickering again then. It might be a bit of a GI issue. Anyway, next test. Coil test. Okay, so we've definitely got a lot of flash lamp problems. Seems like everything else is working. Now you might be able to see here, 
But it switches the relay to the C side, so it's energising the flash lamps. Basically, all the flash lamps, well, four of the flash lamps come on on the playfield. So they're all shorted. So I say, as soon as the power's on, the, the ground side is shorted. I saw that GI flash again then. Definitely need to check that GI relay out on the blue side. It looks like the GI's been done red down one side and blue down the other. And that's on the left side seems to be flickering. Anyway, yeah, so we definitely need to sort those coils out. Uh, sorry, not coils, the flash lamps, they don't work properly. Which is they're doing it again. Right, so switch test. Well, I forgot to shoot lane. Yep. <laughs> Some of these. <laughs> Can't really get my fingers in here much, but what else have we got? I'll do that one. Or can I? No, not easily. No, or can I do the riser ones? Okay, so I've got a switch there. Yeah, I can't get to quite a few of them. Hang on. Yep. That's all working. Do as I can. Can't use this one now. Use the balls. Right. Well, I've tested pretty much all of the switches. I can't get to them all. No more tests left to do. Was that it on this game? So it's always now. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so yeah, so we got to sort out the flash lamps and the GI problem. Right, here's the game lit up in the dark. As you can see, the uh, the back box actually looks pretty nice with the uh, coloured LEDs that the previous owner put in. That's a nice job. Um, and the GI is just turned off in this part of the uh, track mode. So, one of the problems we've got is these flash lamps are blinding me, so I need to get those sorted out. What I think actually might be wrong there, um, if you think back, we, when we were looking before under the playfield, we saw those boards with the resistors on. So each flash lamp has two resistors in these older games. So one of them is to basically pre-warm the bulb, so it's basically putting a small amount of current in it continuously. That basically stops the bulbs from burning out, or at least lengthens the life of the bulb by making sure it's always warm. Um, so I think, because this person's put LED flashes in, they've left the pre-warming uh, pre resistors connected, and that's causing enough current to go through the LEDs, as they only need a small amount of current anyway, uh, and they're lit up. But yeah, I need to fix that because it's blinding me, and it's giving me a headache. Quite interesting, the track mode, actually. It, it darkens the game out, and it highlights individual features and shows you how to play. That's pretty clever. Uh, there you go, you can see the GI is now back on. Um, so yeah, the blue... And red GI looks pretty nice. The only problem is the uh, red's a bit dim down here, so we can kind of do balancing out the brightness, get some brighter reds. Um, I'm not sure if I like those ring lights because they are very bright, so it might get a bit headache inducing. Overall, it looks pretty nice in the dark. Right, let's focus in on one of these lamp bulbs and I can explain how it works. So, if we have a look, we've got terminals for ground, drive and lamp on two sides, so these work two lamps each. So, ground is obviously permanent, ground is connected to the smaller, so these, these outlines here are the actual size of the resistors on the other side. A bit messy that, Ugh. Anyway, so, the ground is permanently connected to the smaller resistor on both sides, the smaller resistor is then connected to the lamp output, so that goes to the flash lamp. So, a uh, the positive side of the lamp is basically connected when the C relay energizes, um, and then the ground is connected through this resistor to allow a small amount of current through. So that lights up the 
uh, lamp so that warms up the lamp so that the filament doesn't burn out when it flashes. Then the driver is basically the transistor on the drive board that basically switches the ground to this resistor which is a lower resistance resistor so it allows more current through. That then connects to the lamp, so these two are common here at the lamp side. That allows the high amount of current to flow to flash the lamp. So, what we need to do, to at least try my theory, is to disconnect the, uh, the pre-warming side. So these two small, small resistors, we're going to disconnect those. I've got quite a few of these flash boards. So I need to work out any that have got LEDs connected to them and try disconnecting these small boards. And I'm hoping that will cure the flash lamp problem. Right, as I am no longer being blinded by flash lamps, it's time to put the glass back on and give this a play. This is only so much I can do one handed. So, one of the things I notice is these flash lamps at the front are far too bright. The LEDs are insanely bright, so I even need to do something about that, get some lower power LEDs, or put some original bulbs back in. Also, I think the flippers are probably a bit too strong, they are really whacking into those back targets. So I need to check if we've got the right coils on them or not. Yeah, on a free game. So yeah, it's not looking too bad. Just got the tweaks to get it perfect, really.